In most applications, you're probably going to retrieve data from a database. Sometimes, depending on the internet connection and other factors, this can take a few seconds to retrieve. While this is happening, it's a good idea to inform users that the application is fetching data. A common way you might see this handled is through a loading spinner. Although this is still a practical way to handle this, one way that has become more common is a skeleton loader. Skeleton loaders are a static and animated placeholder for the information that is still loading. It's going to mimic the structure and look of the entire view that you're retrieving. In this video, we're going to create a reusable animated skeleton loader component and incorporate it for a profile card component using view and one of its many built-in component suspense. So let's get started. To begin, we'll need a new View 3 project. To create this, we're going to use View's official build tool. Inside of VS Code, let's open up a new terminal window and run the command npm init view at latest. For this tutorial, we're not going to need any add-ons, so for all the options, I'll select no. Once completed, let's cd into this new folder, install all the dependencies, and start the local development server with the command npm run dev. This build tool comes with a decent amount of starting code. We're not going to be needing this for this tutorial, so let's start by removing all the files within the assets and components folder. Next, let's remove the contents of the app.view file and replace it with a clean view boilerplate. Lastly, the main.css file which we deleted earlier is defined inside of the main.js file, so we're going to need to remove this as well. Now we should have a fresh clean slate to work with. Inside the app.view file, I'm going to define a few selectors to make this tutorial look a little better. First, I'm going to import a font family from Google Font called Mouse Memoirs. Then we need to reset this app styles with a few CSS properties. To do this, we're going to target everything in the app with the asterisk and two pseudo selectors before and after. Within this grouping, we need to set the box size into border box, margin and padding to zero, and the font family to the imported Google font. Inside of the template, we're going to have a main tag. Let's target this and define some properties. We'll set the max width to 620 pixels, the margin to zero auto to center everything to the middle of the page, padding top to 32 pixels, the display set to flex with a flex direction set to column, and then a gap property set to 16 pixels. With that all set, let's create a user card component. Within the components folder, we want to create a new file called usercard.view and define a new view boilerplate. This card component is going to be very simple. We'll have an image on the left and on the right we'll have the name and a short summary. Now within this component to save some time, since this video is not going to be focused on HTML and CSS, I am going to copy in the markup and styles for this component. And now here inside of the app.view file to see this component inside of our application, we just want to import and define it here inside of this file. So inside of the main tag, we can just say user card. And since we're using a extension called Velar, it's automatically going to import this here for us. And now inside of the browser with everything we implemented, we should now see the user card. For this card component, we have three different UI pieces. We have the image, the name, and the summary. What we're going to do is create a component itself for the animated skeleton placeholder. This way we can reuse the component to create any type of skeleton needed beyond this card component that we're going to be creating. So let's navigate to the components folder and create a new file, and we'll call this animatedPlaceholder.view. And within this component, let's define a new view boilerplate. Now the markup for this component is going to be quite simple. On this div, let's add a class and we'll call this placeholder. And within the div, we're just going to add what is called a non-breaking space. We want to make this component dynamic. So that way we can use it for any type of skeleton that we may want to create beyond this user profile card. Now to allow for this, we're going to want to have this component accept props, which will then set CSS properties within the style tag. To accept props, we're going to use what is called the define props macro. So let's define that here inside of our script and we'll define these as an object. Now for this tutorial, there's going to be three props that we're going to accept. We have the height, the width, and the border radius. Feel free to add additional props as you see fit, but these are the ones that we're going to be using for this tutorial. So within this object, let's define our props. So the first one we're going to have is going to be the height, which is going to have the type of string. And then we can just duplicate this down two more times. And then we'll change this one to width. And then the last one's going to be border radius. 
Inside of the style tag, let's target this div that has a class of placeholder and add some styles to it. The first thing we're going to do is remove this lang since we're not gonna be using SCSS, so we won't need this. And within our style tag, let's just target the placeholder div. Now for the height, width, and border radius of this class here, we're going to take the prop and we're going to bind it to that CSS property. So how we do that is with the vbind function. So we'll define our height, and instead of giving it a fixed value of let's say 25 pixels, we're going to use the vbind function here, and we're gonna bind it to our prop of height. And we can do that for the additional two CSS properties. So we'll define width, and we'll set this to the function of vbind, and then we'll use our prop of width, and then we have the border radius, which again, we'll set to the vbind function, and we'll set this to our prop of border radius. Then we're going to add some static CSS properties. First off, we're going to add a background image which is going to have a linear gradient. And this is going to create a really cool background effect which you'll see shortly. Next, we're going to add a background size property here and set the value of this to 200% and then 100%. We'll add a box shadow. And then lastly, we're going to add an animation property here and we're gonna set this to a animation we're gonna be creating called BG Animate, which will happen over 1.2 seconds. The easing will be linear and we want this to repeat infinitely. Before we continue on with the video, let's take a quick break to hear from today's sponsor, View School. If you were thinking on new and exciting ways to learn Vue and get that hands-on Vue.js experience, here's what you need to know. Vue School is hosting the second edition of the largest hands-on Vue.js event ever, Vue.js Forge, on the 30th and 31st of August. Vue.js Forge is a hackathon style event where you'll be teaming up with thousands of other Vue.js developers from around the world to build a full e-commerce store using Pinia, Vue Router, Vite, and more. By joining this event, you're going to gain hands-on coding experience building a real-world project, watch top-notch experts and discover new approaches to building e-commerce stores, and also add an amazing addition to your portfolio that will help you land that Vue.js job position. Oh, and the best part is, it's free. So be sure to head down below to the link in the description to reserve your free ticket because the event is happening in only a few weeks. Okay, now back to the video. Now let's create the animation we defined inside of our animation property called BG Animate. So to do this, we're gonna go above our class of placeholder and we wanna create what is called a keyframe. So we define this by saying at keyframes and then giving it the name that we define here inside of our animation property of BG Animate. And for this animation at 0%, which is going to be the start, we'll set the background position to 50% and then zero. And then at 100%, we're going to again set the background position to negative 150% and zero. So over the 1.2 seconds that we're calling this animation, the background position is gonna go from 50% zero to negative 150% zero. So with the animated placeholder component completed, we now wanna create a component for the actual skeleton of the user card. So inside of our components folder, we'll create a new file and we'll call this user card skeleton.view. And then we just want to define a new view boilerplate in here. Now for the markup of this component, we wanna make it very similar, if not identical to what we have for the actual user card component. So if we go over to that component and take a look, we have a div with a class of user card, then we have a div with a class of card avatar for the image, and then we have an additional div here with a class of card info for the card information. So for the user card skeleton component, we're going to use the same structure. So what we're gonna do is head back over to this component and I'm going to paste in the markup for this. So we have a div with a class of user card, then we have a div with a class of card avatar, and then we have an additional div here with a class of card info. The only thing that we're going to be adding is this additional div right here, which has a class of summary placeholder. And inside of our style tag, I'm going to remove this lang of SCSS, and then we're going to target this class we have here of summary placeholder with a few different styles. So we'll target summary placeholder, and then we'll set the display to flex, the flex direction to a column, we'll set a gap property here of eight pixels, and then we're gonna set the width to be 100%. And to see this component within the application, we just want to import it into the app.view. So below our user card, we'll just import user card skeleton, and again, since we're using a extension called Velar, it's automatically going to import it here for us, and if we save it, we can now see we have the component within our application. 
Now for the skeleton of this component, we're going to be using the animated placeholder component we created earlier. So let's begin with our card avatar. So within this div, let's define the animated placeholder component. So if we save this, all we're going to see here is a small little rectangle. Now what we want to do is define some props here. So we have our height prop, which we're going to set to 100 pixels. Then we have the width prop, which again will set to 100 pixels. And we also have the border radius prop, which we're going to set to be 50%. And with these props added, we now have this circle, which is going to mimic the card avatar. So let's add the animated placeholder component to our card info. So we're going to add one here for the name, which will add a height prop of 36 pixels and then a width prop of 200 pixels. And within the summary placeholder div, we're going to add a few of these components as well. But we're going to want to remove the width for this one, and then we're going to give it a height of 16 pixels. And then we'll copy this down two more times. So as you can see, using the very simple animated placeholder component, we're able to construct a skeleton for the user card component. And you can use this animated placeholder component to create any type of skeleton that you want because we made it dynamic to account for the height, width, and border radius. And like I mentioned, feel free to add some additional props as you see fit. Now currently within the application, we're showing both components. The purpose of the user card skeleton component is to act as a placeholder while we're fetching data for the user card component. Now currently in this application, we're not fetching any data for the user card component, but we can still simulate it as if we were. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap both of these components inside of a suspense component. Now the user card component is going to be our default content and the user card skeleton component is going to be our fallback content. So we want to wrap this user card skeleton component inside of a template tag. And we want to define this as our fallback content by specifying pound and the keyword fallback. And with this implemented, as you can see, we no longer see the user card skeleton component within the browser. Now, if you're not familiar with the suspense component, I did create a separate video that goes more in depth on the component itself. But the TLDR for this video is, is going to wait for all the asynchronous dependencies to resolve before showing our default content. And in the meantime, it's going to display the fallback content. So currently the user card component is not asynchronous, meaning that the suspense component does not have to wait for anything to be resolved. It's automatically going to show the default content, which is going to be the user card. Now we can make this component asynchronous by adding a new promise within the script. And within that promise, we're going to use a set timeout method and we're going to make this resolve after two seconds. So now if we refresh the application. We're going to see the user card skeleton component for two seconds. And once that resolves, then we'll see the user card component. All right, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you found this helpful and can start incorporating these animated skeleton placeholders into your own applications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.